Hello. Today I'm going to talk about the stereochemistry of the diels alder reaction, and I'm going to focus on the transition state and the way the, the, the geomet geometric requirements of the transition state actually uh, enforce or, or create the, the stereospecificity. Uh, all reactions that, that have concerted transition states are stereospecific, and it's the geometric requirements of the transition state that um, generate that stereospecificity. And so I just have here um, on the top of the page uh, two examples of the stereospecificity of the diels alder reaction. Um, the reaction is stereospecific in regards to the diene. And so the uh, if you have a cis diene, you get a cis product. If you have a trans diene, you get trans product. I'm sorry, cis dienophile, cis product, trans dienophile, trans product. It's also stereospecific uh, with respect to the diene. If the groups on the di ends of the diene are facing in the same direction, both in or both out, you get cis. If one's in and one's out, you get trans. Here. And then I'm going to introduce you here. This is the transition state model I'm going to use for this to explain what's going on in this video. Okay. I'm showing you the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital of 1,3-butadiene, and the LUMO of ethene, our, our dienophile. Uh, the LUMO is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. These frontier molecular orbitals are, are used to explain the way that the transition state comes together. And you notice that the as, as these things approach each other, the symmetry of the HOMO of the diene and the LUMO of the dienophile matches. So you get the you have the dark colored lobe facing the dark lobe and the light colored lobe facing the light lobe, which means you're going to get constructive overlap between the two. And then I have this, 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 this white arrow kind of indicating that my diene is going to come, or my dienophile is going to come up from the bottom. This could also be visualized to happen from the top, but we're just going to have it happen from the bottom. And I'm going to fill in now on my diene some hydrogen atoms. And I'm going to fill in on my dienophile some hydrogen atoms. And I'm like, why are we talking about hydrogen atoms? Bear with me. Right. As this thing, the hydrogen atoms are just small, and so they're easy to represent. As the two things come together, those hydrogen atoms are going to get in the way of each other, and, you know. And if there aren't, aren't, if they're not hydrogen atoms, they're methyl groups, they're whatever. They're going to get in the way of each other, and so they're going to have to rotate, and so to get out of the way. I mean, certainly in the structure of cyclohexene, there aren't things pointing into the middle of the ring, right? So as the diene the file comes up into the middle of the diene, you're going to get these hydrogen atoms in the middle rotating out of the way. And that means you're going to get these hydrogen atoms here on the outside rotating similarly. So the one on the left is going to be rotating counterclockwise, the one on the right is going to be rotating clockwise. So they're rotating like opposite each other. The, the uh, paracyclic reaction nerds would call this uh, disrotary action. Uh, but, but here we go. All right. Likewise... The uh, hydrogens in the dienophile are going to be rotating to get out of the way. The hydrogens that are in that are facing away from us uh, are going to rotate away because they they would otherwise bump into the to the diene. But that means that the hydrogens that are coming towards us are going to rotate up. And so, if these are all hydrogens. And I have all these arrows and things drawn all over here to show these rotations. These are all hydrogens. It doesn't make a lot of difference. But if we replace uh, these hydrogens, any of these hydrogens, with uh, other substituents, and it doesn't matter, I'm just going to swap them out for R groups, you can see that as the diene is coming towards the dienophile, the diene is going to be rotating so that you know, and, and the, the two the two R groups, if they're facing the same direction on the diene, are going to be rotating in the same direction. And so that means you get what we would expect uh, if there's a cis arrangement here, uh, a cis arrangement here. And I'm just leaving them as R because it turns out that even though the diels alder reaction works better for some combinations of 
uh, substituents, the stereochemistry doesn't doesn't care. Uh, if instead, let's see. So here, I'm actually gonna move my. If the the if instead we had uh, trans on our, our diene a file, uh, then one would be rotating down and the other would be rotating up, and that would generate uh, the other kind of stereochemical outcome. And in one case, this would be you would get one enantiomer if these things came together, uh, diene a file from the bottom, diene from the top. You flip it over. You know, you get the other one, or you rotate the die. You flip the die. You know, there's there's other other ways to get to the other enantiomer. Likewise, if I pop in, oops, I need another copy of my transition state. If I fill in some um, alkyl groups in my diene, let's have one in the middle and one on the outside. Um, and in this case, I think I'm going to delete, and I'm going to leave the hydrogen atoms in there. Oh. We would have not R groups not here, but those R groups are on the these two carbon atoms, and one would be down, and one would be up. And then again, you would get the enantiomer of this if they approached, uh, if the out, if the the dienophile approached from the top. Uh, you could use this model actually to predict complex relative stereochemistry for a molecule where you had. Uh, let's do this one. Uh, stereochemistry in the the diene and also in the dienophile. I'm going to keep things on the simpler side. The methyl groups there, nitriles, because they can be condensed pretty nicely. So I can actually predict the stereochemical outcome of this reaction using this model. Uh, and so I'm going to go in here and uh, replace, because let's see, I have hydrogen here. So I want to put an alkyl group there. And I have nitriles here. Actually, I'm going to put the nitriles in the back. I have a reason for doing this, and you're not going to know what it is, uh, but just uh, trust me on it that there is a preference that these things end up in the back, and, and we'll talk about that preference in the next video. All right. So, you know, when all of this starts to come together, it looks like my R groups are rotating downward and my nitriles are rotating downward. So the, the stereochemical outcome is going to look like the stereochemical outcome is going to look like this. Let's see, down, 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 down. And these are actually all going to end up uh, facing. Uh, my R groups are actually methyls, and um, let's see, methyl and methyl, and my other groups are nitriles. Now, at the very least, you know, you should be able to predict uh, that the nitriles are going to be. Uh, cis to each other, and the methyls are going to be cis to each other. So if you if you had thought you had it figured out and you drew uh, a different diastereomer where the, say the methyls were, were in an opposite direction from the nitriles, that's actually pretty good. Um, from a from a standpoint of, I know one extra thing about this reaction. I know that this out this outcome is actually likely more likely, even though it looks like there might be more steric hindrance in the product. Um, but even if you got to this particular diastereomer, I'm cool with that too. Next video is going to be about the endo endo 
rule, which helps us understand why the nitriles uh, are going to tuck under and, and what weirdness that, that might, might come of that. And then um, we'll wrap up by talking about some regiochemistry and then some practice with synthesis. Thank you for watching.